Hi, welcome to this edition of My Semicon Daily TV. I'm Deborah Vogler, and my guest today is Daniel Armbrust. He's president and CEO of Semitech. Today's topic is the role of collaborative research consortia going forward. Welcome, Dan. Welcome, Deborah. Glad to be here. All right. Well, I wanted to remind audiences that you're going to be a presenter at the R&D panel entitled A Conversation on the Future of Semiconductor Manufacturing to be held at Semicon West Wednesday, July 10th from 10 to 11 a.m. So I thought that today's topic would uh, fit in with that theme quite nicely. So here we go. First question. Our audience is certainly familiar with the multiple challenges facing the semiconductor industry, almost parallel introductions of new transistor architectures, new channel materials, optical lithography extensions, and EUV lithography, 450 millimeter wafers, stacked 3D ICs, and we can't forget funding and finances. So with all of these in mind, how is R&D efficiency best served amid this growing chorus of competing interests and economic realities? Deborah, that's a really good summary of the challenges in front of us. Uh, it would certainly be convenient if we could narrow the focus to a fewer of the things that we need to do. Uh, unfortunately, uh, we need to do them all. And the reason for that is that our customers expect uh, continued advancements in power, performance, and at lower cost. And if we're going to stay on as an industry, uh, the growth curve we've been on and remain vital, uh, we're going to have to solve uh, all of those problems. And to me, there's a common denominator in that uh, they're difficult, they're complex, uh, and they have a fair amount of uncertainty. Uh, just not, uh, you know, can we do them, the technical uncertainty, but also uh, what are the implications economically? So I feel that, you know, as an industry, uh, we need to respond to that uncertainty challenge by coordinating better across the entire industry. And to me, what that means is uh, wherever possible, reducing redundancies, eliminating waste. And the other aspect of that is that we have to really time these things right. And what I, what I mean by that is, is you know, when we have to address each of these challenges and when we do, uh, how do we introduce them and get them into volume manufacturing uh, much faster than we've done in the past. Are there any areas of redundancy or waste that you personally would like to focus, you know, hone in on or focus on? Or is that something that a topic you uh, best left for the panel to, uh, to discuss and hash out? Well, I'll be maybe talk about this in our conversation. It has to do with how quickly can we respond. I think that's the key uh, ingredient here. Uh, you're going to hear more about it certainly during the panel discussion. Well, now I wanted to move to the, the price and you know, the cost and, and funding sensitivities, if you will, with the price points of consumer electronics, especially mobile devices, continuing to be under pressure. How will semiconductor manufacturers leverage their participation in R&D consortia? Well, the role the consortia takes, I think, remains fundamentally the same. And that is, uh, our, our role is to bring uh, the industry together. And I mean, that means that there's dialogue uh, that leads to consensus on what we need to be working on. Uh, as I've said, we need to heavily prioritize uh, what are the most important gaps and in infrastructure needs that need to be solved, and then ultimately we put together programs and execute them. I think the entire supply chain is under pressure to continuously adapt and, uh, and to prepare the technology uh, with much more significant upfront investments. And it's when I say the entire supply chain, it's everybody from the chip makers uh, to those that are supplying the materials and equipment, uh, the modeling and simulation, and uh, right through to uh, packaging and system uh, manufacturers. So truly getting the entire uh, supply chain is, is important. And the question is, why do we need to do that? And uh, it's, again, back to the idea of uncertainty. Uh, if you take our device roadmap, uh, there's 
significant questions about what happens, what's the next big step as we get closer to uh, uh, the end of scaling as, as we're used to it. Uh, similarly, when each of these technologies is going to be introduced has a fair amount of uncertainty around it. And then what uh, a lot of people in the industry are talking about is how will these sequence together and how do they interact? So we're not only worried about introducing individual changes, but the interaction between them, how to stage them. And so at the end of the day, it's uncertainty that we have to deal with uh, as we get closer to the limits of scaling, uh, that technical uncertainty, as well as the question, can we do it uh, while continuing to drive down the lower cost per function? It's that economic uncertainty on top of the technical uncertainty. Well, are there some specific steps then or or things that, that a consortia can actually do to adapt to this situation, especially in light of all this, un, this variability, this uncertainty, rather? I think so. Uh, we at Symatech and our fellow consortia leaders really feel it, and you'll hear that in the panel discussion. Uh, the industry is under tremendous pressure, and, and we're experiencing it. Uh, our members expect us to be able to adapt, and our thinking is in response to all this uncertainty, uh, what we need to do is move much more quickly. If you think about our industry, uh, we've done a really good job of cooperating, uh, of being more predictable. Uh, we're famous for our roadmaps. But when you think about how do you deal with uncertainty, uh, to me, uh, it puts us much back to where we started from. At our roots, we were, as an industry, a bunch of startups. And startups invariably face uh, restrictions of, uh, of resources. Uh, uh, they're under constant time pressure. And so we've been looking at uh, how startups today are dealing with uncertainty. And frankly, they've learn from a lot of the practices that we've adopted in our industry around lean manufacturing and lean product development. And so how do we apply uh, those methodologies is the question we're asking ourselves. Uh, the learning is around very quickly uh, finding a hypothesis about something that needs to be addressed, very quickly getting uh, industry validated learning and then scaling once we're sure that we're working on the right problem set. So at Semitech, uh, we're using these techniques uh, in the early stages and uh, are, are finding some success there. And so if I were to summarize that, you know, we have a very, very dynamic environment. And I think there's a limit to how much we can really plan and predict and to be humble that uh, some of this is going to be learning on the fly. And so if we can be quick on our feet, I think we'll be able to pick the right problems, we'll work them at them when they matter, and we'll be able to pull the industry together in a way that, that makes sense. And so uh, how do we respond? How do we adapt? I think it's, it's quickness, it's speed that's going to matter. Well, what do you hope will come out of the panel discussion then at Semicon West, and indeed any of the other activities in which Semitech is going to be involved at the show? But we don't have all the answers, and I think what you'll hear is you'll have different takes on the problem. Uh, I hope that we can describe some of the things that we're doing in Semitech. We've got uh, plenty of visibility within the various forums that are there, and we as a team are going to be listening very carefully for uh, does the industry see the problem set the same way, and what are the things that need to be worked on right now? And uh, so I hope to do a lot of learning uh, during the week. Well, thank you very much for being our guest, Dan. And this wraps another episode of my Semicon Daily TV. Please join us again.